Hello, welcome to Boys Town. It's a beautiful sunny day here in the village of Boys Town today. It's actually 60 degrees out. It's fantastic weather. Uh, but today we're going to take a special tour, kind of go back in time. We're going to visit Father Flanagan's historic home here on the campus. And we'll, we'll see it decorate for our Christmas uh, traditions of Irish holidays based on Father Flanagan's Irish uh, heritage. And the hall, I'm just going to give you a little history of the house itself. This was built for Father Flanagan in 1927. It was a donation. And after this home was built, he lived here until 1941 when he moved down to the rectory at Dow Chapel. And as you come into the home, we took, picked the time period in 1929. So it's 1929 as we step inside and go back to the days when Father Flanagan lived here. And we'll go right into Father Flanagan's living room and we'll get to see his fireplace. And you can see the home decorated. And we're going to wander through some of the rooms here in the house. And you get to see how Father Flanagan lived here and celebrated the holidays uh, in the house. And we always start right here in Father Flanagan's living room. This was the living room of the house that Father Flanagan loved. And behind me, we have his fireplace. And in the wintertime, you can find Father Flanagan usually standing by the fireplace or sitting there in his chair getting warm. Uh, and again, the room is done in 1929. So the furnishings you see here, many of them represent the furnishings that were here when Father Flanagan lived in the home. We have some special items in the room uh, above the corner there. We have a round photograph. That's Father Flanagan's big brother, Patrick Flanagan. And that's the reason why Father Flanagan came to Omaha was he followed his big brother to come and live in Omaha because he came here to found a parish. For our Christmas traditions in the room, we have a Christmas tree. Now, true Irish Christmas traditions, uh, they did not have a, a Christmas tree. But Father Flanagan, being an American, he adopted the uh, Christmas tree. And on this tree, we have special ornaments. These are the collection from our, our director emeritus, Father Val Peter, who we lost this past year. He came one day and donated his family ornaments. So on there are the Peter family Christmas ornaments from the 1920s and 1930s. And throughout the room, we have paper chains because that was part of the tradition of having an Irish Christmas was to have the children make paper chains. So we've carried that on uh, throughout the room. And we have a wreath too that we put up. And on the mantle, we have a nativity scene. His nativity scenes are very important to an Irish Christmas. That was usually the centerpiece of all the Irish traditions. And in the house too, in the corner, we have an old fashioned radio because Father Flanagan loved music. He lived in the house with his older sister, Miss Nellie and nephew, Patrick Norton. And they often would come in here in the evenings in the wintertime and they could listen to music and tell stories and reminisce about their lives in Ireland and what was going on at Boys Town today. We have a special painting in this room. This was part of Father Flanagan's art collection he collected. This was donated and it represents three homeless children. And it was part of the collection he created for the children here at Boys Town. And this painting hung in the dining hall, which is today the Hall of History. But he wanted it available so the children could see that. And music, again, was very important to Father. We have a player piano and Father Flanagan, when he would have lived here, would again would have musical instruments. His family told us that next to the fireplace, he had a gold harp, which someday we would love to get a harp and put it there by the fireplace, just like Father Flanagan had. And back in the 1920s and 30s when Father lived here, if you came to visit, you would first start in the reception room. So we have this reception room here set up. This is kind of looking like it did when Father lived here. Uh, on the special table here, we have some gifts, and these are gifts that our current boys and girls, boys and girls have. When they tour the house here at Christmas time, we have Bank of the West created these little gift bags. So every boy and girl gets a little bag with some cocoa mix and candy in there, and so those are special gifts from our, our great corporate donors. And in this room, we have a painting in the corner that Father Flame create, uh, collected, and it represents a boy in front of a judge with his parents because many of the children in Father Flanagan's time came through the court system and he saw that painting and wanted that uh, to reflect how children came to Boys Town. Some Christmas traditions we have in this room, we have the uh, Holy Family candles, which was very important in Irish tradition to have candles uh, lit uh, throughout the season. So this one represents the Holy Family. And then in this room too, up on top of this original bookcase, which was in this room and belonged to Father Flanagan, we have these little stars. These are paper stars that some of our boys and girls made about, oh, about five, six years ago. We had the German American Society here in Omaha come and teach the children how to create Christmas stars. So that's a collection of Christmas stars created by our boys and girls. And uh, outside of this room, we can now go into our, our dining room of Father Flanagan. And as we come by, we have a photograph here of the Flanagan family. This is a picture of his mom and dad, John and Honora, and his brothers and sisters when they came and finally immigrated to live in America. 
And this is Father Flanagan right here in the front row when he's about 18 years old before he became a Catholic priest. And he had two more sisters that remained in Ireland, Mrs. Stoughton and Mrs. Naughton. But by about 1910, the entire Flanagan family had immigrated to come and live here in Omaha. This is Father Flanagan's dining room. And in this room, all the furnishings, even the chandelier, were part of Father Flanagan's uh, collection. And this was all donated to Father Flanagan by donors when he had his, his new rectory created in 1941. And we wanted to pres uh, preserve this furniture and put it on display for our guests. So all the china and silver you see in this room is all donated to Boys Town in honor of Father Flanagan. And in this room, we have some special photographs. And they're on the walls. It's a picture of his mom, Nora and his dad John and the Flanagan family donated these to us not too long ago and we had them digitized so the original photos are at the Hall of History and but these are copies and the Flanagan family told us they always hung in the dining room so that's why we have the, the uh, uh, pictures in the dining room and on this on the buffet here we have an Irish Christmas tradition it's the carved turnip so in Gaelic we have the term the Christmas car uh, 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 candle and the tradition goes, the mother of the family would carve out this turnip and put a red candle in there, and that would be lit at Christmas time. And again, for Irish traditions, a lot of them are based on light, because in Ireland at Christmas time, it would be kind of dark, so the light would bring warmth and, and light into the home. And not, with not much money for decorations, they would use items that they had around the home. Because you'll see throughout the rooms, too, we have uh, holly, and that was an Irish tradition. The children would go out and collect holly and put ivy and holly throughout the house on the pictures. And then we have this image of Father Flanagan. This belonged to the Flanagan family. This was Father when he was about 30 years old and when he uh, founded Boys Town. And so it's part of the collection we have here too. Then we have Father's kitchen. And this kitchen was recreated to look like it did in 1929. And we had actually the nun that worked for Father as his housekeeper, Sister Bertel of Acuna Gundas. And she said this was much brighter than what she remembers when she worked here. So we, we made it look nice uh, in honor of Father Flanagan. And the Irish Christmas traditions we have up on the windowsill is a uh, glass of uh, water. And the story goes you would put a little cup of water on your windowsill. And as the Holy Family traveled to the Holy Land, they would bless that water. And then the family would keep that water. And all through Christmas, if you weren't feeling well, you'd take a little sip of the water. And then we celebrate what's called Little Christmas which would be January 6th. And that was a tradition when uh, the lady of the house or the mother of the home who took care of the family, that was her day to kind of relax. And then the family would all cook and, and, and cater to her because she had done all the extra work at Christmas time. And we have the table set in the kitchen for three. Again, going back to the tradition of Holy Family, the idea would you would set a table with for three and as the Holy Family traveled on uh, Christmas night, they could come and they could stop in your house and have a meal and also the tradition goes you'd leave your front door open so the Holy Family could come into your home. And the china on the table was actually used by Father Flanagan too. This is some of Father Flanagan's Christmas china that one of our alumni donated back to us not too long ago. So we're very uh, happy that we've had that in the house. We're gonna step, um, kind of go through the back of the house because when Father Flanagan left here, the house was turned into a dormitory and they had orders of nuns that live in the homes. So technically, I'm going out the back door of the house from 1927, but this is part of the addition that was added in 1941. And in these rooms, we created little vignettes telling little histories of Boys Town. This one deals with our, our, our farm at Boys Town. We have pictures of the boys who would have sat at the table back at that time, and the history of how the kids would raise the uh, food and serve it in our dining hall, because our farm it was very important to produce 90% of our food back at that time. And this we're going into is Father Flanagan's office. We created this because we wanted visitors to see how Father Flanagan's office was looked in about 1943. And in this room, we have pictures on the wall, and Father's office is always filled with images. And the images on the wall, you see here, all the servicemen, our former boys, would send their pictures of Father Flanagan. He was named America's number one war dad, and so they would send their pictures so their dad could put his picture up in his uh, office. And this was Father's Christmas gift in 1939 from the boys. This desk has 250,000 inlaid pieces of wood, and it took the boys three years to create. And Father Flang had loved this desk, and he used it to the day he died. And when Father Flang passed away, it was put on display. And we have Father Flanagan's chair, and then we actually have the sign that he, cre he had created, telling how this was created in the manual work a workshop by the boys here. He was so proud of this desk and uh, the craftsmanship they did. 
Also in this room, we have in the corner our time capsule that we put in there for our, during our centennial in 2017. The idea is in 100 years from now, that will be opened by the next generation of Boys Town uh, staff and personnel and boys and, they'll, boys and girls, and they'll see what was going on during our centennial. And then throughout the room, we have many items that were made by the kids in the 20s and 30s and 40s. We have a little cabinet of gifts Father received on his trips overseas, steins from Germany, porcelain from Korea, and lacquer bowls from Japan. Our Christmas tree we have in this room is dedicated to our servicemen also. We have a dictionary here because one of our old alumni, Mr. Ed Novotny, who we, we just loved Ed, he was here for many, many years, told me one day how Father Flanagan always kept a dictionary in his office, and every day he turned to a different page and he'd pick a word, and he would use that word throughout the day to increase his vocabulary. Because even when he was director of Boys Town, he was still learning and improving his life, and so we carry on that tradition here of having one in Father Flanagan's office. We'll go now back down our hallway here, and we'll re-enter the uh, back of the original home from 1927. Uh, the room we're going to see next is going to be Miss Nellie's bedroom. Miss Nellie Flanagan was Father Flanagan's big sister. She came to America before Father Flanagan, and she lived in, with Father Flanagan to the day he died as his housekeeper. And Miss Nellie always had her bedroom down by the kitchen, so she had her own private space, and then she could make sure everything was being taken care of. And the bed, the quilt on the bed was made by our Boys Town Mothers Guild, and that's a special Christmas quilt. And Miss Nelly has the red candle in the window and the paper chains, just like the rest of the house. And in this room, too, we have some of Miss Nelly's personal items. And she was always kind of the heart of Boys Town. She took care of Father Flanagan, and we have stories of the boys coming up to the back door, and she would sneak out and give them a cookie. So she was always beloved by the boys, too. And so we always look at Miss Nelly as our role model of how to take care of the children here at Boys Town. And right now, we're going to go upstairs, and we can see Father Flanagan's bedroom and the other rooms of the house. But before we go upstairs, there's a couple photographs that we put here so we can show our visitors and especially our boys and girls when they come to visit the house. We have this first photograph. This is a picture. We're right here in the Father Flanagan house, and this shows the original building that was next door. The sunken garden of original to Boys Town. There's a little statue there of the homeless boy that was her first symbol from the 1920s, 1930s. And above it, we have an entrance sign that was put here in 1925 by a group of businessmen. And there's all these signs saying, welcome to Boys Town. But on the right, it says, all races, all creeds, all colors. So right at the entrance to Boys Town, back in 1925, Father Flanagan had a sign letting children who are going to come live here and visitors know that this was a community open for all children to come and live at Boys Town. Now we're going to go upstairs here, and we'll see on the second floor where Father Flanagan's bedroom is located. And as we come up the steps on the landing, we have a uh, photograph of Father and again, his mother and father, John and Honora Flanagan. And as we come upstairs, we come first to what would be the guest room. And this guest room is where Father Flanagan's mother, Honora, lived when she lived with them for about three, four years. Otherwise, this is for guests when they had come visit the home. And again, it's 1929. We have Holly on the window, Holly on the pictures, the paper chain. This is a special quilt on the bed, again, made by the Mother's Guild. It's all special applique of uh, little Christmas scenes that they created for us to have on display at Christmas time. This is Father Flanagan's nephew's room, Mr. Patrick Norton. Mr. Norton came from Ireland to help his uncle back in about 1920 and stayed until he passed away uh, in, his, in his 80s. And this was his bedroom when he lived with Father. And again, we have the paper chains and holly. And then we have a street here in the village of Boys Town named Norton in honor of Father uh, Patrick Norton. And across the way, we have Father Flanagan's dressing room. And this is where Father would get ready in the morning. We actually have his blue uh, quilt, uh, blanket there. That's what Father used when he went to football games. And we have his gloves, his heavy winter gloves. And again, we have the room decorate paper chains and candles in the windows for Christmas. And then we have it all set up with a suitcase with Father getting ready to travel. And this was his special area to get ready in the morning. And on the landing here, we have a picture of Father graduating from college from Mount St. Mary's, and there's Father right there in the front row. And that's the college that he went to in Maryland that said he had no future and he should go live in Nebraska because he never amounted to anything. And then next to it, we have our Irish Christmas blessing that we uh, got in Ireland that we always put up at Christmas time. And we have our phone here in the hallway too, as many homes did back in the 1920s. And so this was the original phone for the house when it was constructed in 1927. 
And our boys and girls today are just amazed when we explain to them this was the only phone and it was a party line that everyone could listen on, on your phone calls. They're just amazed that that would take place. And then when I explain to them, you would have to sit right here and make all your phone calls. That just completely blows their minds because they just can't imagine that you'd have to sit in one spot and make all your phone calls. Then this is Father Flanagan's study. And this is where he would come in the evenings and he would work. And we actually have Father Flanagan's chair. This is his black leather chair that he would sit in. He'd read the Bible or he would work on his, write his letters here. So it was a, a, a room that he used a lot. Excuse me. And then this room too, we have some of the certificates he received uh, from college and one from the Vatican when he's made an archbishop. We have a little Christmas display in this room, a little tree for Father, and again the paper chains, candles in the windows that would be lit because that was very important. They'd all be lit on Christmas Eve to, uh, to welcome the Holy Family as they travel by. And again, we have some of the certificates from college. And then this, uh, we have in this old house, the sleeping porches. And this was Father Flanagan's sleeping porch. And this is where Father Flanagan uh, would sleep when he lived in the home. And he, uh, this was uh, uh, where his bed was located. This bed actually has a quilt called the Irish Chain. And this is all done by hand by one of our Mother Guild members. And it's won several awards due to its craftsmanship. And Father Flanagan, when he would sleep here in the summertime, could open the windows and let the breeze come in. And now in the wintertime, he could open the blinds and let the sun come in. We actually have a photograph on the wall here of Father. He had a rocker that he would sit in. And you can see that's how he would, uh, he would uh, sleep out here on the sleeping porch. And when he received the Oscar from Spencer Tracy for the movie Boys Town, this is where he received it. He was ill that day. He was laying in bed. And when the photographers came in from the press, and there's a picture of Father laying in this spot holding the Oscar when he received that. I want to thank you today for visiting the, the Father Flanagan house. This is just kind of a quick go-through of how the home looks decorated for the Christmas season. And hopefully by spring we'll be reopened again. And I would encourage everyone to come out and visit and to help Father Flanagan continue on his ministry, go to boystown.org and learn how you can help participate in keeping the, the program going to help boys and girls and families across America. May you have a Merry Christmas, and thank you for joining me today.